Yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy and Salarmstrong back again. And today we're going to be going over the quickest, easiest, most efficient way to complete your third inning program so you can pick up one of the three bosses, whether it be Chipper Jones, Brian Roberts, or Shane Victorino. I think they're all great choices. I think they're all usable. They all have a lot of value on the market right now, sitting around 95K. If you're a no money spent player, you know how much 95k can do that gets you one of the high tier diamonds or at least close to one of the high tier diamonds uh, a little bit <laughs> out of the third of the way to trout but hey that's still good progress if you're no money spent guy you want to come in here you're going to want to bust through this get through these rewards as quickly as possible get your bosses either keep them put them on your squad you know if you're trying to build up your squad or if you're going for a guy like mickey mantle put them on the market sell them take your stubs and cash in complete some better collections get some high diamonds maybe do an entire division like the al central or the nl central as you can see we are chilling at 302 stars and that 302 stars that's only about um seven to eight hours or so playing on friday which is a lot it's a good chunk don't get me wrong we played about seven to eight hours on friday and we didn't play at all saturday I was gone all day Saturday until late Saturday night where I came on and I finished it out. So I easily could have finished this late Friday night um, or early Saturday in the morning around noonish and gotten closer to 200, 250 K for Chipper Jones. That's who I chose at 300. I put him on the market. I sold him. All the bosses value wise are around the same. I sold Chipper for about 90 K. I could have sold him closer to 250 if I would have completed it a little bit faster, which I easily could have. But as you can see, we're sitting at 443k subs. So we definitely took advantage of this program to make some subs and go through. We sold our boss and I'm going to tell you exactly what I've done to complete the program and walk you through step by step through the things that I did and my approach and my thought process while completing the third inning program. So the first thing you're going to want to do, and it's something we say a lot around the channel, it's a bit of a common theme, but you got to take what the game gives you, okay? So first off, we're going to go in here, showdown. 70 stars. They made showdown a little bit quicker this time. Um, it's not necessarily as easy as the um, second inning or first inning showdown. That, oh, But only one mini boss and then the final boss. I think the challenges are personally a, a little annoying in my opinion, but they're not too bad. You can go through bust out showdown. You're getting 70 stars there. You come into conquest. You complete your conquest, you're going to get another 30 stars on top of that. You're already at 100 stars plus. You play about 9 to 10 games um, in conquest since you do have to go through and steal the fans as well. Uh, you could add an extra game to that. And you're going to get stars just from playing that. You get about 1 star every 2,000 XP. So you're looking at really closer to 40, maybe even 45 stars, depending on how much XP you're getting in those games for busting out conquest. Uh, not to mention, it's a great place to knock out your dailies and things like that, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But in addition to that, there are hidden rewards in this conquest map. When you look at the conquest map under the giant stronghold, you're going to pick yourself up a five pack bundle under the tiger stronghold. You're picking your up. You're picking yourself up a set two prospect pack, which, you know, something like that. Personally, I pulled the rare tier out of mine. I got lucky. I know. And I picked me up a 30 K prospect that I'm holding on to currently, but I could sell. I could use to complete the prospect collection. I can do a lot of things with that. Worst case scenario, that's another five, six, seven K you're getting out of that just from taking that stronghold and conquest. And then at the end, under the Indians, you have a ball and as a habit pack. Again, guaranteed golden there. Maybe you get lucky, pull a diamond, make a decent amount of stubs off of that. So then what you're gonna want to do personally, I started with showdown. Then I went into conquest, got some of the tediousness stuff out of the way there, because I know those can be a little tedious. Those can be a little tough to go after but i got those out of the way and then at that point i jumped in here to these online missions as you can see i did not win 10 games in ranked seasons for me that's a little bit more time consuming not to mention you have to win 10 so you're looking at you know closer to 12 15 maybe even more games those can be anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour long each you're looking at a pretty big time sink to not to bust out 10 games in ranked seasons that's something i'll just slowly do more over time but i did do the 10 games online it can be ranked seasons battle royale or events personally i did events i was going for alec bohm anyway i wanted to go through bust out some event wins i got to 50 on that i was able to get the alec bohm as well knock out two birds with one stone and not to mention these breakout players you need 12 innings with breakout players and there's two breakout players eligible for the event i was able to put them in my squad bust out those innings in about 
three to four games. Those two players are going to be uh, Dave Kingman. He is with the Mets. You can find him there. You can find him on the market. He's about a thousand stubs or so. Uh, and then Rob Nin, you can find him on the market as well. He's about a, another thousand or so stubs as well. Uh, you can put Kingman. Personally, I put him at first base. His defense is really bad. So I threw Kingman at first base, put him out there, ate up those innings. He actually hit a couple home runs for me during the event, Got me, helped me get a couple wins. And then Rob Nin, you can just start a game with Rob Nin. Pitch uh, the first inning. You'll get another inning there. Bust out those 12 innings while you're also going for your online wins. Again, we're looking at efficiency here. You get those two both done at once. You're going to be in a pretty good place. You could also uh, do Battle Royale. 10 wins in Battle Royale. Not too inter terribly difficult, but it could take you a couple runs to do so. Uh, so you're looking at spinning subs to do that. But you could also draft some breakout players during, battle, during your Battle Royale run. Put them on your squad. Get the breakout innings there as well. But again, personally, I did the events. Only three inning games. And since it's free entry, uh, I find that a lot of people quit pretty quickly if they get down. I had people quit before the first pitch. I had people quit after the first run. You have a lot of things like that happening. And I was able to get those breakout innings. Not to mention as well with the event, you have a bit more flexibility with your lineup. So I was able to tailor my lineup for what I was going for in terms of the daily missions, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. So after completing Showdown, your two online missions and Conquest, you are going to be at 130 stars in the third inning program, closing in on halfway to go. And then we talk about the collection. So the collections alone is going to get you another 95 stars on top of all of that. So you're sitting at a really, really solid spot there. Coming in here at 225 stars once you do this third inning voucher and the breakout series players. Again, that's 225 stars without including XP you're getting from playing and doing conquest, showdowns, winning 10 uh, games online. It, you know, Maybe that takes you 15 games to do so. You're looking most likely closer to around 250 stars once you complete everything the game gives you when you take into account how much XP you're getting just from playing the game. Now, one thing to note about the stars X and XP kind of transition there is that it does not count for bonus XP that you get. So for example, if you look at a showdown, you get bonus XP for beating the final boss in a showdown, right? That bonus XP you get will not accumulate you any stars, just the XP you get while playing the game. So when you see your XP change in the top left corner between half innings or at the end of innings, that is XP that is going to count for getting you stars. No other bonus XP will do that. But you're going to get a lot while going for online wins, getting your conquest wins, doing short on things like that. After completing all of this, you should be around 250 or so stars. Uh, what the third inning collection, once you get that voucher there, it's not too terribly expensive. Plus, you get 15k subs back for completing the voucher and you can probably pick up the three bosses if you don't have any right now you can pick up the three bosses for i think a little under 90k total and then you're going to get 15k back for collecting those within that collection plus you're going to get xp on top of that and pick you up 75 stars for the third inning program so again once you do that and then you do the breakout collection here there's a couple that are on the market again this rob nin and the kingman that we were talking about they're on the market um Cliff Lee's on the market. A couple of these guys are on the market. A couple of these guys are collection rewards. So if you go bust out some of the cheap collections, Posada and Bob Gibson, you get for free. You do your player programs, pick those up for free. George Foster is the Reds collection reward. Uh, Big Poppy is a pretty cheap one. Uh, a couple collection rewards there. A guy like Tom Glavin is not too expensive either. Pudge is another card you could potentially get for free. So a lot of free cards. It should be relatively uh, easy for you to get 10 breakout series players, get that extra 20 stars there. And again, get you up to that 250 or so range before we talk about and include dailies. So now we're going to look at our dailies. You're going to want to be knocking out these dailies. As you can see, you get new ones every 24 hours. And as we can see right here, we have two stars there, five stars there, two stars there. And another three stars there. That's going to get us 12 stars total. And so if we're at 250, we had 12 stars of that. We're at now 262. Now, one thing to note about these is that before the program drops, you can actually stack these. So every 24 hours, 
these will update and give you new dailies. And in five hours and 23 minutes, when I when mine update, I will have a new mission for each of these all right there. However, if you don't complete any dailies within a 24 hour window, you were, your dailies there will stay the same, but you'll actually have a new one now pop up behind it so you can stack daily. So when the program drops, or if you haven't been doing your dailies, even now you'll probably have that, you'll have these four missions here. And let's say you get 12 stars from that. Then once you complete those, they will be replaced by four new missions instantly without having to wait for them to refresh at the 24 hour mark. Let's say you get another 12 stars from that. Now you've gotten 24 stars. You're closer to 275, 280 stars in the program. And then you can wait for another refresh on your dailies, whether it be a couple hours from that point happening once you knock those out or go in and start playing the game and grinding out stars that way. So personally, what I did is I was basing my event lineups on what I needed for these dailies. So pirate innings with pitchers, I was doing those in conquest games since you can do that offline. And then these exchange ones, obviously I was going in through making those exchanges, just using commons. It's only 2000 exchange value. It's not a ton. If you got to pick up a couple comments for 15, 20 subs a piece, go ahead and do that. Knock out that that's worth three stars. Now these two middle ones are always going to be your multiplayer ones. Every once in a while, you can get a very hard one, but the higher the difficulty of these dailies, the more stars you're going to give. As you can see, this one is five runs. We'll get five stars for that one. This one was only three runs with silver infielders. We only got two stars for that. I've had some dailies that give you as much as 10 stars. They're harder to complete, but if you can complete them, you can get a lot of stars. But as you can see, just with the dailies alone, we're looking at probably closer to another 25 or so stars. Getting us to that 280, maybe even 285 star mark uh, and really getting us towards closer to the end of the program with really not too much work. I mean, busting out showdown, you're looking at maybe an hour there. Conquest, maybe another hour and a half to go ahead and do that. The collections don't take any time at all. And then your 10 event wins is kind of really where the variable comes in to get those breakout innings as well, as well as busting out these dailies. But anywhere between five to six hours, based off how quick you're going for that, you're looking at seven to eight, maybe nine hours, give or take a little bit. You're already at 285 stars maybe even a little bit more, maybe a little bit less depending on your dailies and how much XP you're getting, but that's a significant progress. You're making a lot, a lot of work through that, especially as you're continuing to accumulate stars just from playing. So once you've done all of that, you should be very, very close to completing the program. And there's a couple different paths you can take based off what you want to do. Uh, personally, yesterday, as I was completing the program, I got to around 290, 295 stars after completing my third set of dailies along with everything else. And at that point, I was at 45 wins in the event as well. So I decided I'm just going to continue playing the event for five wins. Um, and once I do that, I'll have the Alec Bohm and I'll get up. I'll get chipper during that time as well. I ended up, as you can see, 302 stars. I got chipper and Alec Bohm. Another thing that has some potential as well as you can go in here and you can do your showdowns. If you're working towards your stage two showdowns, go in through here, do your showdowns, do your mini missions, do your bosses. Um, I think you can get about one to two stars, about three stars every two total showdowns that you can do and come in here and knock out. But again, it depends on how much XP you're getting. Um, the mini missions, sometimes they can be really short and you're not gonna get a whole lot of XP. Again, in game XP is all that matters. Any, any, bonus XP you're getting from these missions. As we see, if I look in here, we get that 300 bonus XP for completing this mission. That will not give us anything towards getting a star, nor will this 3000 here or the 6,000 there. But most of the time when I do a final showdown, I'm getting closer to 7,500 XP. So about 1500 XP I'm getting just from being in and playing the game. So that's almost a full star there. You should be averaging about one to two stars per showdown. So if you're wanting to bust out your team affinities, you can knock out two birds with one stone while you're doing that. Another area that has a lot of potential for gaining stars again. At this point, once you're done with everything you can do, the name of the game is getting XP as quickly as possible. As you know, home run derby, retro mode XP, they're not viable options anymore. Um, I think that was a change that was necessary and always going to happen as a lot of people were 
exploiting that system to really, really accumulate mass XP in a fashion that SGS didn't really plan on happening. But there's still a lot of ways that you can get XP pretty quick. One method that I had that was very effective was doing March to October on the Hall of Fame or Legend. Uh, if I would have a good inning on Legend and score four to five runs in my half of the inning while batting, I could get upwards of 16, 1700 XP just for that half inning. So almost an entire star, once you include the pitching half of the inning as well, probably get a full star just from one inning of playing the game. And not to mention, I'm working through my March to October's. I'm getting those team affinity points to help me make progress on some team affinities that I had been working on and things like that. So again, a little bit slower than showdown in terms of making progress on team affinity, but I think it has more XP potential. And I've noticed that you get a ton more XP if you're patient at the plate. So what I do is I go in, same with showdowns, or if I'm playing March to October on legend, I take until two strikes. If you can, if, if I get, if I go three up three down, but have a couple six, seven, eight pitch at bats, just that alone usually gets me six to seven, maybe 800 XP per for a half an inning. As you can see, if you need 2000 XP to get one star, you're going to accumulate stars very quickly doing that and following through that process. Um, another method that I haven't tested out of the ton, but I think also has some potential is essentially doing the same thing as playing March to October on legend. However, you're going to do it in a play now versus CPU game, and you could go through, uh, you could play the Orioles, maybe a minor league team and get somebody like the NL AL all-stars, one of the legend teams, and you should be able to beat up on them pretty easily, score a lot of runs, go somewhere like Col Colorado, ship it get a ton of home runs and get a ton of XP that way get you 1500 XP per half an inning. You're getting about a star every inning. Once you include the pitching side of things, you play a nine inning game, pick up four to five stars. Once you include some, you know, XP differences there, that's going to be a pretty effective way to pick up stars. Again, not something that I've done a whole lot of testing on. Again, I, once I finished my event wins and got to the 50 with Bohm, I was at the 300 stars. So I didn't need to go through and test that. But I think, uh, from what I've heard from some people, that's a very effective way. And it's something I'm going to be looking out for the fourth inning program when we grind out that. And speaking of the fourth inning program, based off the bosses that we have now, I'd be looking at, again, completing this program as quickly as possible. So you have time to accumulate stubs and pick up the three bosses again, hopefully for her a little cheaper down the line. I think the settling price of these is going to be a little bit higher since chipper is so desirable. The other bosses are getting picked less. Chippers being bought more, their prices are going to stay a little higher, maybe around 50 to 60, maybe 40K on the super low end. It is going to be more expensive to do this voucher, but you do get more XP back when you complete the voucher for the fourth inning. And I think it's safe to say that the fourth inning cards are going to be some of the best we've seen so far. They should be 95 overalls. And if we're getting a card like Chipper here in inning number four, I think they could really bust open the gates in inning number four really give us some better cards not to mention that it's going to be more expensive to complete the voucher for the fourth inning less people are going to have the voucher assuming there is not another voucher glitch this time less people are going to have the voucher the cards will be more desirable you can see what happens here demand is higher supply is lower you have fourth inning bosses that are probably going to be very very expensive as we can see here we have 26 days left in the third inning program, so a little bit longer than last program, but still a relatively short program overall compared to some of the programs we had last year. Fourth inning program going to be here before we know it. I'd start getting prepared for that. And the best thing you can do to prepare for that is bust through the third inning program, get your rewards from that, make your subs from that, and start getting ready for the fourth inning. Not to mention that the quicker you're going to get to 300 stars, the quicker you're going to be able to take advantage of these back end ones, five packs, stubs, prospects, headliners, more subs, things of that sort. As always, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it has been helpful for you. If you have any other methods of quickly obtaining stars for the third inning program, if you busted it out super quick, what was your method? What was your approach? And for those that have comp completed it, did you sell your boss? Did you keep it? How much stubs did you make if you did sell it? I know some the first chipper that sold sold for 400k, which was insane. Even on Saturday, chipper was selling for 200k still. Uh, his price has settled closer to 100k now, which is still super expensive for a boss compared to what we've had so far. So 
there's a lot of subs out there if you took advantage of that let me know down in the comments below how much did you sell your boss for and as always be sure to like and subscribe if you want more content we got a pretty awesome week coming next week with content from videos in my opinion and there's always going to be more show content on the horizon next week a bit of a slower week we have the live series event coming up which we'll be talking about in more detail sooner along with uh two headliners and a player program there but may player of the month should be just right around the corner new rank seasons is coming up before we know it and then next thing we know fourth inning program is going to be here and who knows what other tricks are up the sleeve for sds as well and one final reminder as always we do stream live on twitch if you're watching this when the video releases we're probably streaming right now take the link down in the description below we stream every day but thursdays and saturdays starting around 6 to 7 p.m central time it's a lot of fun we go through we grind out the game we play online we talk about how to make subs in the market i help you if you're a no money spent player whether you're a money spent player you're looking to build the best team looking to make the best moves be efficient with your time i'm gonna go through and I provide my help and tips when doing so. So be sure to check out that link in the description below. But until next time, I'll catch y'all later.